Well, do you know what? Despite a lot of little injuries and frustrations, this has been a pretty good season on paper with Palace. We've got through in Europe, albeit not in the manner we wanted. And today, we've got two huge games in a battle for European places in the league. Let's go and see if we can keep on impressing or whether we stumble against the big sides again. Yes, hello and welcome along for part 95 of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We are back today for the start of 2034 and we face Norwich and United. Looks like two mid-table teams there, doesn't it? But both just two points behind us with half the season gone. The battle for the European spots is hotting up massively. City are running away with the league again. And from second down all the way to probably 11th, we have got one hell of a battle on our hands. We face two of the big sides in that race today. Norwich who are overperforming, United who are probably underperforming. And I just wonder if one of these jobs is going to pop up soon. If you're looking forward to finding out and seeing how we get on, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. It might yet be our last episode with Crystal Palace anyway though, because if we go and have a look at the job centre, we have been interviewed for Wolfsburg. Now, the favourite for the job has kept changing. And it looks on paper like a sideways move. But I remind you, we're 12 years in. Do not judge things on the start of the game. Because Wolfsburg, if we go and have a look at the club now, four and a half star reputation, sixth, fifth and fourth the last three seasons. They've got three or four wonder kids. They've got a lot of younger players of the highest quality. And ironically, they're reliant on a Scottish target man and an English playmaker, which I do find quite interesting. So a big move potentially on the way in that one, but we're not going to worry about that for now. We're going to keep trying to do our job with Palace because the transfer window's open. There is an offer in for a young player who probably isn't going to offer that much for us, to be honest. And in terms of the window opening itself, there have been some links for us with a couple of left backs who might well make a difference. If we go and have a look at the schedule, though, it's been a very mixed December for our football club. You were with me for the start of it as we were brilliant away at Brighton. We got a hard-fought draw away at Feyenoord with a rotated side. The injuries starting to take their toll when we were rotating there. We got a one-all draw thanks to Joris Mankon. But that late final goal was costly and we'll see why in a minute. Against Blackburn at home though, a 2-0 win. Ribeiro and Rodolfo with the goals either side of half-time. Mankon got a brace as we beat Valerenga. Secured our passage through in the Conference League. But we missed out just on the top eight. So we are going to have that extra game in the last 32. Albeit, we might not be here for it. Uh, further down, we lost them 1-0 to Spurs. That was a difficult game. Basically, if you look at the lineup, we didn't have any strikers fit. Backnin had an orange injury and was recommended 20 minutes from the fitness test. Manquant was the only other one fit. So we actually played with one up front and dropped Aldav into the holding role. And we had no shots in the game. We just played for a 0-0 and couldn't get it. We then got embarrassed in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal. Again, the game's catching up. We rotated a bit, but we were then a mix of poor players and really tired players. Mancon did well. He got a goal again, but the rest of them just got outclassed. I mean, it was 1-0 at half time. We weren't doing that badly. The Ketelari scored two absolute screamers at the start of the second half. And from there, it was game over. Josh Doig the Scott came in to embarrass us. We did bounce back, though. Guy Vaknin back with a brace against West Ham, despite a red card from Gordon Ward. And in a 4-1 win at home to Liverpool, two for Vaknin, one for Lewis, one for Barra. Didn't cling on for the clean sheet, but it was a stunning display. After these two games, we've got a friendly run for the rest of January. So let's just go and see how we get on in these ones. Liverpool 3-0 up against Leeds. They're back into the top four. Let's see how we get on away at Norwich. No idea what their squad's like. Sonny Perkins still there, but a lot of rotation otherwise. A 4-2-3-1, Levi Colwell in defence and Meslier in goal. A few good players there. Garnacho on the right wing too. This is going to be tricky, isn't it? Let's have a look at the lineup here, which is basically the team that played against Liverpool. And I think we're going to have to rotate it because you can see Vaknin and Lewis both coming back from injury. Both recommended to be rested a bit. So tempted to start one and drop the other one. But in truth, I might just go all out for it. We've got Rodolfo and Ward who missed the last game who can come back in. We've got a lot of decisions to make. So we'll be back in a moment once we've made them to run through our starting 11. 
Right, I might end up regretting this, but I'm only making two changes. Both Rodolfo and Ward come back in. They'll do the hour, we'll run them into the ground because they did so well in that other game. And then what we'll do, we'll bring on Mancon and Ribeiro, fresh as a daisy for the last half an hour. And then they can play in the United game if need be. But the starting 11 for today is set for the goal. Tear moves out to right back. Nelson switches to the left. Rodolfo and Barrett in at centre half. We've got Hames and Spassoff on the wings. Ward in alongside Aldav in the middle. He played really well last game. And he's starting to overtake Rothwell. So we'll stick with him. Fresher legs in centre midfield. And then Vaknin and Lewis running on empty up front. I'll see if it works out. Given Vaknin's injury record this year, I might end up regretting that decision. But for now, we've got to try and stick with a winning team. And after these two, we've got an FA Cup tie. And we can rotate everyone for that. So let's go and get into the first half as it's six changes for Norwich. They've gone for the opposite approach of fresh legs. So Reese Williams dropped out. Soon Sut Bell dropped. Anthony Gordon out the squad entirely. They've got a lot of good players coming in. It's a good side. They've got a very good goalkeeper. And we are struggling a bit for legs. So we don't have a strong first half here. I think it's going to be tricky to win it. We can get two or three up like we did against Liverpool. Maybe it'll look a little better. As Meslier's got the goal kick for Norwich. Just three minutes in. Long one forward, which Rodolfo heads away. Ganacho picks it up, though, for Perkins, who's into the box. Oh, he's brought down Rodolfo. Why would you do that? You're one of the few players who had a breather last game. And he's brought him down in just the fourth minute. VAR will check it. It's going to be a penalty. And that is something that's inexcusable. All the decisions about what you do up front, and then your fresh centre-half gives away that. Perkins steps up. We need a Setford heroic here. He is standing very tall in that goal. But can he make the save? You bet he can. He doesn't just save it. He goes and holds it as well. Big start for Charlie Setford. And Rodolfo gets out of jail. Nine minutes on the clock. It's Perkins with a throw on the right. Gets the ball into midfield for Severino. It's been a great start from Norwich. Kempshaw down the wing, but Spassoff wins it. He won, incidentally, European golden boy this week. Not sure that he's going to be at this football club for long now. A set for the goal, the hero so far. Short ball out to Rodolfo and Aldav. Nelson White to Spassoff. Cuts him from the left into the centre circle. The ball is poor. Talks him up and then he does that. Mikel wins it for Norwich. Goes back to Colwell. In the centre circle. Plays short to Bogard. He gets it wide to Kempshaw. It's a good game of football this, but Norwich look like they're on top. And I'm fearing we may have to drop to balance here. Because Perkins gets in. Crosses the ball to Severino. And there we are 1-0 down. We're getting completely roasted by the hosts. And as soon as we go away to a top side in this division, we just crumble. And maybe that's me trying to be too positive in these games. But we've started poorly. We don't deserve anything from it. And we've got to find a way around it. Maybe it is like we did at Spurs, just trying to bore teams to death. Because albeit we didn't look like scoring in that game, we look like conceding far less too as Rodolfo. Big ball forward to Vaknin. In behind for the first time. And it's a good deflection wide for a corner. He's not quite as fresh as he would be normally. If he's in form, if he's firing, if he's not overworked, he probably gets in and scores that. As Spasov's got the corner from the right-hand side to the back post. Rodolfo up, but it's beaten to it. Spasov gets there again. Back to Ward, but nothing comes of it. And it stays 1-0 to Norwich. They deserve their lead. They're going above us at the moment. It's so important if we can nick a point from this. At the moment, though, I don't think we've got much of a case for it. We're going to get to the break 1-0 down. We thoroughly deserve to be behind. And looking at some of the other results, we might be in a bit of trouble. It's just about staying in that pack till the big jobs come up. At half time, we say, go out there and do it for the fans. Chat to Spasov. Why are you anxious? Come on. You've got the ability. He's motivated. Now go and be the star of the show. Got to bear in mind that United game is only three days away. We could be in a bit of trouble here because we're ruining the legs today and we're not even getting a result for it. A spass off into the box. Colwell heads away. Hames will get there on the left. Chance to cross to the byline. He goes. Cuts in. It's brilliant play. Through to spass off. The team talk worked. Brilliant from Hames. Cutting in from the left. Spass off coming back from the right having taken the corner. And a composed finish on his left foot. His weaker side as well. 1-1. One, one. The team talk worked. But look at the legs. Spass off knackered. Lewis knackered. Vaknin playing awfully, and now we're going to have to do it, aren't we? The first changes in this game, Rothwell on for Aldav, who's on a booking. I'm going to take Barrett off on a booking as well. Tear into centre-half and Hurley on at right-back. 
and I'm also going to take both of the front two off. Mancon and Ribeiro will come on, Lewis and Vaknin sacrificed, and then maybe it'll be one of the wingers, because I don't want to be without both in three days' time. Hames and Spasov both knackered, but we've got to try and get the result here as well. And this is where it becomes a tough decision. Spasov has scored and still got the worst rating, so he's going to come off. I'm going to go for Jimmy Campbell for the last 15 or so minutes. And let's hope he can find his form from the start of last season again. As Meslier with a big kick, Hames wins the header. Both sides tiring. We're probably worse for it at the minute though. And those extra Thursday night games, these are the sorts of nights where it starts to catch up. Cassius into Jones in midfield for Norwich and Garnacho. Great football from the hosts here. Beat us down the left wing. Cutler's in. Was he onside? I really hope not because the goal's gone in. But we're going to VAR. Let's hope it's not given. It was very tight with the right back. Please give us a bit of luck, VAR. Goals awarded. 2-1 Norwich. And all of that work, all of that fatigue, going to be for absolutely nothing. Well, five minutes added on. We went attacking, but the most we've had is that free kick from Ward. It never looked like going in, never looked like dropping. And unless we get a miracle from this goal kick, it will be defeat again. When we've gone away to top half sides this season, we have really struggled. And I'm not sure that it's going to be enough to get us in the top seven. I look now as well at what we've got with Manchester United at home. We're going to be knackered. Do we get the result? I don't think so. Ames gets it in toward. Go on, Nick has a point. Up to Ribeiro. I think he's offside. He is. He played in Campbell as well. But he's not going to matter. It is over. It's 2-1 to Norwich. And it's the same old story. Bar that Liverpool game last time out, we are beaten the sides we expect to. And we lose against the top teams. It's just the level our side is at. And we've consistently played it this year. Through the dressing room, it's an okay display. I'm going to say I'm unhappy. I'm going to desperately try and get people fit. We'll be back in a moment for the United game. Well, here we go then. Three days later, under the lights at Selhurst Park, is Palace for United. It's the battle for sixth and seventh place. Maybe we can take the United manager's job. Who knows? But for now, it's not going to be Wolfsburg. We're rejected for Simone and Zaghi. But there is a big bit of news in the transfer window from Dougie. And I don't know whether to be worried or not. Because he has made a bid for Sky Vink, who is a four-star 27-year-old striker. He is also a brilliant player who can play off the left wing. And I only have one question having seen this offer go in. Who is he planning to sell? Because we've got four great strikers. The only reason he's signing him is to get someone else out. I'm a little bit worried it might be one of our stars. We've also had an injury to Charlie Setford. So he won't be in goal today. And we've also had an extension of the ban for Gordon Ward. Who had one game suspension. Came back and played in that Norwich match. Now he's out for another two. So a lot of changes are going to be needed today. There's going to be a few struggling legs, although we did rest some for a day. Henry Ocon is brilliant for United. They've got a brilliant team here. And of course, it's one of our academy stars up front. So Benoit Badiashil always scores against us too. I can see his in the starting lineup. If we look at this team, two players unavailable and a few others we might want to rotate. Back in a minute to do just that. Oh, I'm sorry, it's worse. I've just noticed Setford got injured on the day that we play against Joel Finnegan's parent club. I didn't realise he was from United. So now we've not even got Troy Higgins because he played in the uh, the Papa John's trophy tonight. Oh, we're now down to a grayed out keeper. Oh God, not for this game. Seriously, we've got to play the grayed out amateur standard goalkeeper in this football match. There are none available in the youth teams. What's going on? Back in a minute, it doesn't matter what 10 outfield players we pick. We ain't winning this game now. Well, I don't really know what to say now. We've got a great out amateur keeper in goal who is going to cost us the game. Tear is back in at centre half. Nelson back to the right. Luzon in at left back. All changing centre midfield as Rothwell and Gallagher return. And Ribeiro is in for Vaknin up front. Just gone for one of the two today. We want to rest some of the tired legs. But we've got Oxford in the FA Cup at the weekend. We should be able to rotate for that. But now, though, my oversight's going to cost us because I know Troy Higgins isn't very good. But he's better than what we've got now. Five people come in for Manchester United. They've rotated a fair bit too. Sancho's still there. Trinkau's a superstar. Paddy Ashil is the ultimate bogeyman for us in this save. And Henry Ocon is a Crystal Palace Academy graduate who moved here for £92 million. But let's go and see how we get on in the first half. Please don't let United have a shot on goal because it'll go in. We just need to get into a three-goal lead quickly. Far easier said than done in this one. 
We're 10 minutes on the clock and we've not conceded so far, which is probably a positive, though Spasov on a booking down the left-hand side. We've seen him have a sending off already this year. This time he cuts the ball into Rothwell. Short to Hames, who's got options. Lewis, one of them, straight at a goalkeeper. And their keeper's capable of making saves, which doesn't help us. What a time to get an injury to Setford. The only game Finnegan can't come in, as Rodolfo plays short to Gallagher. Has options wide, but goes back instead. Is out to Luzon eventually, who should be well rested here. He picks it up again. At his break, finds Spasov. Through ball to Ribeiro. Brilliant football. What a finish, but the offside flags up. And normally, if the assistant has given it before, VAR is not often overturning. Has he got it right? Because it was a great through ball. And it is offside, though. Spasov unlocked the defence. But Ribeiro, just too impatient with his run. Look at the stats, though. It's been a great start. And he has saved one shot on target, Messias. Well, five minutes to the break. We've got four yellow cards already, which for a team that's not really diving in is a little bit concerning. But at half time, a clean sheet I will certainly take. And if you take this result in isolation, a draw would be a fabulous scoreline. Marcus Rashford is on in the twilight of his career now. As Bassoff puts the corner to Rodolfo. And it's the set pieces that deliver again. He has been an absolute monster from them. And he's becoming a very good football player. I'd expect he'll be off very soon with his release clause as United pick up another injury. But we are starting to look good as Spasov puts it in. Ribeiro's up. Oh, he scored as well. Hits the post, dribbles across the line. Just about stays over the goal line there. Look at the ball there. It looked like it was staying out. But thankfully it's 2-0. And the set pieces are really delivering for us here. Not what I expected to win this game on at all. It's not one yet because if United can have two shots, we know that they could both well go in. As Ocon finds Rashford, they've got a man over in Vanderson. This is where I get concerned, because if there's a shot on goal, I don't think it's getting kept out. As Vitinha finds Sancho, chance to cut in. Good football to Curans. They're waiting, they're finding their opportunity. Duffy on the left will cut in. Apologies, the voice is starting to go. It's getting a bit crackly at the minute. But it's back to Popper. It's good pressing from us. Out to Beardsmore, the defender. Don't give the ball to Baddy a shield. He'll score. Vanderson gets it. They might well anyway. To the byline he goes. Back to Beersmore again. Inside to Curans. He finds Ocon. Great turn. Great goal. Against his former club. He goes and gets the ball out the net. Rodolfo is spun. It's 2-1. United back in it. That's individual quality. You can't deal with that. As United are back with a quarter of the game to go. And Henry Ocon has curled an absolute perler into the top corner. Out of nothing from nowhere. What do you do with that? In fairness to Messias, I don't think any keeper stops that one. But with 20 to go now, we might as well make changes because Nelson's knackered. He'll be replaced by Hurley. Lewis has had a poor game, so Vaknin on. He'll play alongside Ribeiro. First choice partnership from last year. We'll take some of the booked players off as well. Gallagher replaced by Aldav. And we'll put him on the other side to Rothwell. We'll go for Hames off at the expense of Hagen. And then finally, we're going to go for tear off at the expense of Adam Barrett. Five changes made, lots of fresh legs on. Can we make it count as Gallagher? Shots blocked behind for a corner. The offside flag was up. The subs will now be made. We can nick a winner great, but avoiding defeat in the circumstances, it wouldn't be terrible. Well, the stats would suggest we deserve to win this match, but it's a free kick now in a great position for United. Rashford over it, an amateur keeper in goal. And the expected outcome. Through his hands, it wasn't really in the corner. And it's 3-2 United. It's a cruel old game sometimes, isn't it? Your first choice keeper getting injured when your backup is ineligible for one match. And in a match where we've had all the shots, most of United's have gone in. 0.4 expected goals and they've scored three. And the goalkeeper has a rating of 6.2. He's cost us the game. Let's go and get through the dressing room. It's one of those days, isn't it? We'll try and go on an FA Cup run now instead. Hopefully, there'll be some jobs soon because at the moment, we are starting to slide down this Premier League table. 10th place, albeit we're not too bad points-wise, we are still well away from the top places in Europe. I'm hopeful that maybe we can turn this around. But for now, we're going to look for other jobs and probably from this point on, prioritise the Cups. Well, the usual pattern of the season continues as we beat the sides we expect to and lose against the sides who are competitive. We've got a good rest of the month though on paper and mostly at home, so I would expect to win most of those games. We'll also have a goalkeeper of senior level by the weekend. 
What we're going to do, though, is get to the end of the month. It will depend on who we get in the FA Cup fourth round, providing we get through. But if not, we will return for the return of Europe, because that is what we're playing for this year. Can we win the Europa Conference? Can we win an FA Cup? The draws are going to be important in both of those. If you want to stay up to date and find out who we get, and you did enjoy seeing those two very narrow, heartbreaking defeats, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments what you think we should prioritise. Should I still go for the top seven in the league? It's not many points away. Or do I now have to go for the cup? So let me know your thoughts on that. If you want to stay up to date and find out which we do, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We will be back with a big one in the Builder Nation tomorrow. Check that new season out in the eye above. There's also links up there to the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the blog story as well. But thank you for watching as always. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you back here next time as European football returns for Crystal Palace.